All right, so welcome to the first video on file format reverse engineering. What we're going to do in this video is just talk a little bit about reverse engineering file formats on Windows with the target that we're going to choose and some of the tools that we're going to use to help us along in this process. So uh, the, the target that we're going to use is this game called Book of Demons. Um, we're going to be looking at save file formats for this to try to understand how the game saves uh, user data as you play through the game. Uh, so that we might be able to create a program that can modify these, read these, and parse them. Perhaps you have a community of people that can upload their game saves, and you can parse out all the information on what cards they have, how many upgrades they have, um, how far along in the game, and progression, and all that stuff that you can do. Um, so the whole process is going to use a game, but it's important to remember that none of this is really specific to a game at all. Um, the tools that we're going to be using, the methods that we're going to be using, really apply to any type of file format reverse engineering. Uh, it's just a little bit more fun to do it on an actual game. Uh, so the game, I'm going to be grabbing the demo from itch.io, which if you go to itch.io, uh, think trunk, thing trunk, itch.io, slash book of demons, you can download the demo here. If you go to return to games, which is the developer, uh, to their actual site, they also have a get the demo. Um, I'm actually going to be grabbing it from itch.io. I think they are slightly different versions, perhaps. Um, some of the other tools that we're going to use to um, start doing this analysis, uh, especially if we're on Windows, we want to be able to make use of some really uh, helpful tools. Uh, one of them is going to be Process Monitor. Process Monitor is nice because it gives us all of the Windows API events that are firing when the game is uh, running. So we can filter things, we can add certain triggers, and as those events happen, we can identify what's actually going on in the application. It has a really nice feature that allows us to interrogate the stack of the application while it's running. So it allows us to find locations in the binary application itself uh, when things save or get uh, written to disk or read from disk, all that stuff ends up being um, super helpful for us. For a hex editor, um, one of the hex editors we're gonna be using is O1O Editor by Sweetscape. Uh, this is an absolutely amazing tool that has a ton of features. Uh, one of the file formats that we're going to take a look at has a CRC. And if we're not sure what version or what type of CRC is being calculated for the file, uh, this has some really nice tools to be able to calculate those on the fly so we can figure it out really quickly without having to open up a bunch of other applications. It's a really, really great tool and super helpful um, when analyzing any type of binary data. Uh, the next one is Katai Struct. So Katai Struct has a really nice like in-browser IDE and uh, like area where you can actually try uh, developing things. So it uses YAML for the, uh, the language, like the markdown, and uh, it will actually generate parsers in a specific target language that you want. So it has a compiler that you could download. Um, and if you wanted to write your, your structure up for the actual file that you're targeting, uh, you can then specify like what file format uh, or which programming language you want to develop your, your parser in. Um, and there's a ton of files that are already on here. So if you're looking for specific file systems or databases or game save files or something, um, chances are uh, good that there's already something available for it. So that's all well and good, especially when things are actually hitting disk and we can see sort of what's going on or we're analyzing static content. When things are happening in memory, we want to know as they change what the application might be doing. So it's very possible and very common that, especially in video games, as you make modifications in game, like you unlock something new or you level up, that, that isn't being like streamed and flushed to a file every single event. It's being stored in memory and every once in a while periodically or when you actually choose to save the game or when you exit, then it'll be flushed to actual file on disk. So we talked about a second ago, Process Monitor isn't going to be able to pick up those in-memory things because those are actually going to be functioning uh, in-memory and not actually touching disk or using some type of Windows API. So using Cheat Engine as a form of a uh, memory manager or memory scanner is going to be really important to us. Uh, Cheat Engine obviously is used for video games, mostly for creating trainers and video game cheats, but it can really be targeted towards uh, any application that you uh, are targeting. So we'll see how we can actually use Cheat Engine to locate areas or routines inside of the binary and help our reverse engineering efforts uh, while things are happening in game that we may not be able to understand when we're actually like reading the file or writing to the file. 
For understanding the actual binary target, the game itself, uh, we want to be able to use a disassembler that we can mark up uh, the information, what we're actually uh, doing and where those retunes lie. Uh, so we're going to be using Binary Ninja. Binary Ninja is going to allow us to uh, analyze specific uh, subroutines and make some notes and comments uh, and sort of analyze uh, what's going on in the application. So that's a rundown of the tools and the target that we're going to be going for. In the next video, we're going to be uh, taking a look at our actual target application and then start using some of these tools so I identify the targets, the file uh, targets of interest. <laughs> we'll see you then.